Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, I want to cover one of the On One Effects masking capabilities that you might be overlooking. Uh, this has to do with masking for your entire look. You know, you, you know that you know, you're an effects user. You know that you can apply masks to each and every one of the filters. You can control the strength of each and every one of the filters. You can also do this for the sum total of the filter stack. There is a global opacity control and there's a global mask as well and they are very useful. The opacity one you might know about, the masking one you might not or you might not know when to use it. I'm going to show you why it's there and when it's useful. So let's just get right into it. So for this photo, uh, I want to give it a cooler, more wintry type of feel. Uh, just, you know, it was it was very, quite cold when I was out on location capturing this. I, I want things just to be a little more you know, bleached out or you know, more of a bluish you know, maybe even aqua tone uh, in the uh, in the the, the the trees here you know taking some of that uh, that, that green out of there just making this feel much more more barren and frosty and so great I'm in effects I want to uh, start with you know grabbing a look and cold mountain looks promising and when I fiddled around I liked cold mountain 2 cm2 that did a nice job of, of what I was after for the trees right it took the uh, the, the, the bluish stuff out of the trees and it made them more white through a bunch of filters on the filter stack and we know that we have in the thumbnail once it's applied I have a fade slider because this is a little kind of strong and so you know fading this around and right now you know I'm, I'm watching the trees and you know, somewhere around there it feels good okay so so far so good right this is a pretty standard fare if you're an effects user you know about the fade slider and you know that you can control the overall strength of the look well where does this connect in with masking let's, let's take a look at this here so when I adjusted this fade slider and I pulled it back you know 20 ish something percent notice over on the right hand side right underneath the effects tab we have an opacity slider and that 77 which is dialed in that happened because of the fade slider. As I change the fade slider, I'll pull it down, I'll move it up, you notice that the opacity slider on the right hand side is adjusting as well. That's what fade is doing. This slider here is the same one as this slider over here. And so when I adjust the opacity as the little fly out you know, uh, tool tip gives us there, it adjusts the opacity of all of these filters together. The sum total of this look is further refined by opacity. All right, we, we all know that. We understand that. Now, I'm playing with opacity here. Now, now I'm going to work over here. I like what it did to the trees. Great. I'm going to do it before and after with my backslash key. But what happened is I lost the blues in the river. And that's, that's not acceptable to me. So if I take the opacity down farther. It's like, all right, now I have the blues, but the trees aren't exactly what I want them to be. So I'm between like, I like a, a stronger set of these filters. This look, I like stronger on the top of the photo and I like it weaker on the bottom of the photo. This is where the global mask for the entire filter stack comes in. Yeah, I could go in and start masking each individual filter to do stronger on the top and weaker on the bottom, but that's time consuming and you may have 10 filters there. You have an option to do it all in one shot and it is kind of hidden in plain sight. It's this mask icon right here. Now, I've clicked on it once before I started recording here. It normally looks like this, uh, you know, typical little masking options thing, but this here, let me collapse that filter. This mask icon right here applies a mask to the entire set of filters. So to get what I want, I want a stronger look on the top and a weaker look on the bottom. I can mask away, mask out, paint out with my global mask to the bottom half give or take of the photo. This is the situation where the global mask control is incredibly useful. You've applied a look to a photo and it looks good at a certain strength in parts of the photo and it looks good at a different strength in other parts of the photo and you can use masking to make things work. And so what I'll do is I'll set this up for, I want it at the, I'll, I'll dial this in so that the, the trees look good. 
because I need it to be stronger for the trees. You know, if I masking, I can't I can't mask in more than the opacity, right? This is like my upper limit on uh, on how much of this strength I can apply. You can always adjust things later, but we'll dial this in for the trees, and then I'll click my mask icon for the global filter mask, right? This one that's inside this this little tiny area above all of your filters, below, kind of connected to the effects tab. Now I have my mask options open. This will be a very simple mask. I'll grab a gradient and maybe put about, you know, a third of the way down. I'm going to rotate that around. And you know, take a look at my mask icon up there. I am applying the look to the top of the photo and it's completely removed from the bottom. My last step here is to take the opacity of my mask and dial it back some. I, mean, I want some of that look on the bottom but I don't want uh, full strength. And so maybe I'll feather this out some, you know, position that here. And so now when I do before and after, before, after, I'm cooling and cutting some of the aquas, some of the bottom part of this photo, dialing this look back, but not entirely. And I have a, you know, latitude here. I can, I can, bring more of that aqua in less by controlling the gradient and because this is associated with the global mask I'm masking the entire look but just from a portion of the photo so this is incredibly powerful let me finish off dialing this in here it kind of felt uh, felt good to me to have just a little bit a little bit extra taken off there I don't want too much of that aqua to come through maybe somewhere around there you know, and that feels pretty good. I'll hit my, uh, I'll just hit the Z key to pop out of that tool. And so, you know, the net sum here is I've applied a look, I've dialed in a certain opacity, a certain strength at the top, and I've tapered that off and uh, reduced the amount of that look on the, roughly the bottom half of the photo. So that is the global filter mask in On One Effects. Controls the mask for the entire filter stack. I find it most useful when I have a look on a photo that is good for parts. I need to taper it or you know tone it down for other parts. Uh, you could use this in, in a layered workflow, I suppose, but at that point, if you're working with layers, you're probably going to do that type of control at your layer mask. It could work either way, uh, but the, the place where I use this is grab a preset, dial in a look that looks a little bit too strong on certain parts of the photo, reach for that global filter mask paint out and tone it down with a lower opacity brush or gradient or whatever makes sense for your particular masking job. Hope you found the video useful. Got questions? Drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.